All right, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to actually drink alcohol, gain muscle, and lose fat. So a lot of people think that if they have alcohol in the routine, they're gonna diminish their gains, they're not gonna be able to lose fat. So I'm actually gonna show you the facts about alcohol and how you can actually use alcohol without derailing your goals. Now, I remember in the past when I was way too strict and I didn't go out, I didn't drink at all, I just stayed in. I actually got worse results because I would fall off the wagon way more. When I gave myself a little bit of permission to go out a little bit, meet some girls, go on a date, go to birthday parties, have a couple drinks, it actually took the edge off and I had way more energy to transform and I was way more consistent. When I tried to be too extreme and too much of a hermit, that's when I started binge eating. I started eating more food. So it's okay to be able to live a little bit. And that's the whole point of getting into amazing shape. You want to build an amazing body so that enriches your life. So you can actually have a great social life. Now, absolutely, you do not have to drink to socialize, okay? But if you do want to have a couple drinks, you can. So let's get into the video. Now, before we jump in, I want to share my favorite cocktail with you. It's actually called a Cadillac Margarita. So you do an ounce and a half of tequila, one ounce Grand Marnay, one full squeezed lime, and a little teaspoon of agave, shaken, not stirred. It is insane. When you have two of these, you feel incredible. Okay, you're on a date, you get a couple Cadillac Margaritas. It is the best drink. So the first fact about alcohol is the only way you can gain fat is if you're in a calorie surplus, okay? So if your calories are on point, you will be able to lean down while having alcohol. So if you have two glasses of wine, but you're in a calorie deficit, you will break down body fat. So the whole idea that once you drink alcohol, you no longer can lose fat is incorrect, okay? So that's really the first thing to understand. In fact, a lot of the reason why people gain weight drinking isn't really the calories from the alcohol, it's actually they end up eating way more food after. They drink alcohol, they stay up later, they get hungry, and they snack when they get home, okay? So if you just focus on hitting your calories and making room for a little bit of alcohol, you will still lose fat very well. Now, I will say, of course, as you get older, if you drink too much, what can happen is the next day you have a hangover and then your energy levels are lower. And so that next day you're lazier, you don't burn as much, so that can really hurt you. So it's really important not to drink too much where you actually have, are hungover and you lose energy. So interestingly enough, as far as alcohol and testosterone, it's actually kind of a mixed bag. So some studies actually show that basically a low dose of alcohol, about three drinks per men, can actually increase testosterone about 15 to 20%. Now, you gotta take that with a grain of salt because there's other research that shows that men that have three beers every single night, they see a 10% dip in testosterone, but I'm actually not a huge fan of beer. Beer contains hops, hops are estrogenic. So I actually find that if you just have alcohol, you know, two days a week, it's really not much of a net negative. Just stick to three drinks and you're actually not gonna impair testosterone production. Now it's important to state if you're getting hammered drunk and you're having eight, nine, 10, 12 drinks, you will impair testosterone quite a lot and you will impair protein synthesis quite a lot, okay? So when you're drinking heavily, there is a big drawback, okay? But when you drink kind of a lower amount, three, four drinks, you do not see that drop in testosterone, you do not see that drop in protein synthesis. Now, fact number three, it's actually quite interesting because there's some, there's some debate around whether or not alcohol calories count. Now, by that I mean, a gram of ethanol has about seven calories. That said, when you have people replace calories from food or carbohydrates with alcohol, they actually see fat loss happen, okay? So for some reason, the calories from alcohol are not as fattening as you'd expect. In fact, alcohol actually has a high thermogenic cost. So when you're drinking alcohol, some of those calories actually get burned through digestion. Now, interestingly enough, some research shows that drinking alcohol can actually result in a reduced appetite for food. Now, this is also very individual, it depends on you. If you're someone where you have a drink or two and you're less hungry, that's good to know. If you're someone where you drink and then you, know, you just wanna eat, that's also good to know. If that's you, you gotta be a lot more careful. But I find actually, sometimes having just one drink with dinner and I actually am less hungry. You know, my mood's boosted and I don't need to eat as much. In fact, I actually, every time I've gotten very, very lean, I usually would have a couple margaritas, you know, two times a week, even three times a week, and that would take the edge off. And when I, you know, went a couple weeks no, dr not drinking, I just wanna gorge on food a little bit more. So it really depends on you, but I actually find that having a little drink, I'm not as hungry. So fact number four, um, research shows that light to moderate drinkers outlive non-drinkers. So that's actually kind of crazy. You know, you'd think that people that were sober would actually live the longest. As well, light to moderate drinking seems to protect against type two diabetes, Alzheimer's and depression. Now again, it's very important that you keep it very minimal. If you're drinking a lot, it can actually worsen things and you can actually find you fall into depression. But if 
you drink moderately and socially and you have it in balance, it can actually have some benefits. Now, of course, you know, if we look at the brain, there are some negative effects of alcohol on the brain, okay? If you're drinking moderately, so you need to look at that as well. And some research on these observational studies also show that, you know, there isn't this life extension benefit of moderate drinking. So you gotta take it all with a grain of salt. Now, fact number five, moderate drinking actually does not impair muscle gains. In fact, you know, some of my, when I was packing on muscle and even at my biggest, I actually was drinking probably more than I would recommend. I had a couple nights a week where I kind of went above three, four drinks a week and I had no problem making gains, making strength and muscle gains. In fact, it's been shown that a moderate dose of alcohol does not impair muscle growth and protein synthesis. So fact number six, after three or four drinks, alcohol becomes a lot more negative. So when you first have two or three drinks, you know, you take the edge off, you feel less stressed, you might feel a little more recharged, you show off the work mode, you feel more talkative, you're more euphoric, you know, so it has some of these kind of like nice, chill, sort of social benefits. But as you start having five, six, seven, eight drinks, that's really when the decision making can really be impaired. <laughs> Um, you can lose coordination. Pretty much that's like the level where they do not want you driving, when you're more of a risk to people on the road, okay? So when you have two or three drinks, you get some of those more relaxed benefits, and then as you start to drink more, it can be a very strong net negative. Now it's important to state, some people have a very, very hard time having two or three drinks, then stopping. Some people, once they start drinking, they go, they go, they go. You know, uh, if that's you, it actually might be best for you to stay away from alcohol. If you're someone that can have two glasses of wine, you know, you have a nice evening, you're on a nice date, you're with friends, you're with family, you can have a drink or two, that's fine, right? If you're someone that just starts going, then that you gotta be very, very careful. Now, in fact number seven, sometimes drinking alcohol can actually lead to increased activity. You know, for example, if you're going out dancing, you're going out to a club, you have a couple of drinks, you're walking around, you're moving, you're, you know, taking a girl home, you're having sex. So it's like sometimes having a couple drinks, if you were to just stay at home, you actually end up moving and burning more. I remember when I was younger, I'd go out, I'd have just two or three drinks, my step count would shoot way up, I'd be way more active, I'd wake up leaner. So if you're actually having a drink or two and moving, walking, dancing, that can actually be enough to actually burn the calories you consume from alcohol if you're not drinking that much. And again, with alcohol, the best Option is to do like a liquor with club soda or Perrier, vodka soda, tequila soda, etc. cetera. Um, that margarita I shared, it adds an extra, you know, 40 calories per drink from a little bit of carbs, a little bit of sugar. Um, but if you're doing sugary cocktails, if you're doing beers, you're doing ciders, you're gonna be taking in a lot of calories. So I actually recommend the best bet is to do a tequila or vodka soda. If you're feeling a little bougie and you wanna just take in a little more calories and make a beautiful margarita, then you can basically do that. Now, if you are someone that drinks a lot and overdoes it, you really need to get this under control. You really need to learn how to have either not drink or just have two or three drinks and be in control. And so you actually really need to do some journaling and really understand why am I drinking so much? A lot of people, if they're going out to clubs, they're going out here, or if they come home from a long day of work, they end up drinking as a crutch, you know? They wanna shut off their mind, or maybe they're nervous, or they're having social anxiety, they wanna get drunk to reduce their inhibitions. And so it's really, really helpful to do a daily meditation. In fact, I recommend everyone, a lot of people have Spotify. On Spotify, you can actually go and listen to Practicing the Power of Now. When you meditate every single day, you actually feel so much more calm, so much more at peace. You don't have that desire to go and drink or go get drunk on the weekend or have drinks after work. You feel way more present. And even, you know, Eckhart Tolle, he's been known to like really enjoy a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. When you're very, very present, you actually can enjoy a cocktail way more when you actually are able to taste the sensation, not just trying to chug, chug it down. You're able to kind of like enjoy the moment a little bit. You can do this without alcohol at all. You can just be completely present. But if you are having alcohol, it's really good to be present, slow down. You know, stop trying to go from where you are right now to drunk. Enjoy the process, be in the moment. And I find, you know, when I do meditation daily, I actually don't really need to drink as much. And I don't even need to drink at all. And maybe I just wanna have one or two cocktails with good company. So slow down, be present, try and understand why am I trying to drink all this? Am I stressed? Am I focused on the future? Do I not wanna be where I am? You know, stress is really being here, but wanting to be somewhere else. That time gap you create, creates a lot of stress and anxiety. So when you can be 100% present and not resist this moment and wanna be here in the now, that's when life gets way more enjoyable and you're not craving these crutches. And the same thing, if you're going out to socialize, learning how to actually get over that fear of approaching someone, that fear of being in a 
big venue with lots of noise and lots of intensity, learning how to just be present and not have to get drunk to handle the venue is actually a very, very good skill. All right, so the quick rules. Number one, stick to lower calorie drinks. Vodka, tequila, soda is gonna be your best bet. You do not wanna be taking in lots of sugar with alcohol. So if you have that Cadillac margarita, you're taking in an additional 40 calories in addition to the alcohol. That's not too bad, but if you're doing sugary cocktails, if you're doing five, six beers, five glasses of wine, it's gonna really add up. It's gonna, be make it, it's gonna make it a lot harder to see in that calorie deficit. So stick to lower calorie drinks. Rule number two, you wanna drink in moderation. Three or four drinks for men, one or two drinks for women, that's really where you wanna be. If you're having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 drinks, even once a week, it's gonna slow you down a little bit, okay? If you're doing that twice a week, it's gonna really slow you down. So you really need to stick to moderation. Now, rule number three, I've seen some people talk about alcohol guides and cutting out, cutting your fat really low, cutting your carbs really low, and just getting a lot of protein and alcohol. I don't find that strategy to be effective at all. It's really not necessary. Just do your little bit of a fast, keep your calories a little bit lower, but you know, eat a balance of proteins, fats, and carbs, and just make a little bit of room for um, the alcohol. So for example, on my plan, you know, you do a moderate sized lunch, a big dinner feast, and you know, some dessert at night. So if you wanna skip the dessert at night and just have a few drinks, or just maybe you, instead of having like a 500 calorie dessert at night, you have something that's like 200 calories, you can do that to cut out 300 calories. That can work well, but trying to cut out carbs completely or, or eat very, very low fat, you're gonna be really ravenous, you're gonna be starving, and it's not gonna be worth having the alcohol. So eat balanced. If you wanna trim out a little bit of calories in, in your late night dessert or snack, you can to make room, but I've actually found if I just stick to my calories exactly as they are, I get my steps in. If I have two or three drinks, I actually end up losing fat just as quickly. If I do four or five, it really slows down, but two or three drinks, I actually just stick to my normal calories. Rule number four, and this is where most people screw up. They have a dinner, they go out drinking, they're starving, and they have no plan for what they're gonna eat at night, so they end up just eating way too much, and they start you know, ordering a sub, they order Chinese food, they order all this food, and they take in an extra 1,000 calories after drinking, and then the next day, that sets them back massively. So you have to have a plan of what you're gonna eat on the days you're drinking. So I recommend you know, eating a moderate sized lunch, getting a nice filling protein for dinner, a little bit of fats and carbs, and then if you have room to work with, just a nice snack plan for when you go home. If you have something planned, you're gonna be good. If you have nothing planned and, you're, and you've had a few drinks and you're starving, you might overeat. So you need to know how to keep your food calories on point when you're drinking. Now the other fun thing with alcohol is that in moderation, alcohol actually is a vasodilator. Sometimes when I'm really, really lean, I'm cutting and I have a glass or two of red wine, my veins pop out. So in a low dose, alcohol is actually a vasodilator. When you drink a lot of alcohol, it actually becomes a vasoconstrictor. And that's also why a lot of guys, when they get really, really drunk, they're hooking up, they don't perform. The soldier does not salute, okay? It's because when you drink excessively, alcohol becomes a vasoconstrictor. As well, when you drink excessively, testosterone comes down. When you have a couple of drinks, some research shows you actually get a little temporary boost in testosterone of 10 to 20%. So you can actually create the most incredible stack. If you do a couple Cadillac margaritas, okay? So a couple drinks, right? And every drink, and the Cadillac, it's about two and a half ounces of liquor. So it's more of like a drink and a half, technically. Um, so you'd have two drinks would really be three drinks. Um, but if you do, you know, your mojo with your dinner, and then you know you can even take some nitro at night after dinner, which boosts blood flow, vasodilation. And then you have a couple of drinks at night. It's like the most amazing sex stack. So actually I'm really big on the nitro. The blood flow you get on it is awesome. And again, the real thesis of this video is that if you drink a little bit, you know, two or three drinks a couple times a week, alcohol can actually be something that's fun for your social life. You can bond, you can you know, get a drink with a friend, a date, it can be good for your dating life, but when you start to drink a lot, that's when it starts to ripple across your life in a negative way. So if you can really learn to have alcohol in moderation, it could actually be more positive than negatives. That's pretty much the video. I want to do that little alcohol guide because I know that we're entering summer. People are going to wanting to go out, do barbecues, have mojitos or margaritas. They have trips planned. So, this is really my tip. And again, it's really, really important. If you're having a hard time drinking in moderation, do that meditation. Listen, listen to practicing the power of now. Get present every day. And then when you have that drink, you're not just flying through drinks trying to get drunk. You're actually able to enjoy the whole time. From the moment that you arrive at the venue and you're sober to kind of enjoying that first drink. And then maybe you have two drinks. You're like, wow, I feel great. I don't need more. You're not chasing more and more and more. When you're always chasing the, that feeling that's when you kind of get lost. But when you're just complete in the now, you don't even need a drink or you have two drinks and you're like, you're good. 
that's when you really have the most power. That's when you have the most freedom and control. And that's the place I want you to get to. And again, it's your choice. You choose whether you want to have alcohol in your life or not. Okay. But if you're going to have it in your life, this is the best way to go about it.